Hello and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. And also welcome back to the Linux Crash Course series here on Learn Linux TV. But if this is your first time when it comes to this series, what I do in the Linux Crash Course series is teach you an important Linux related concept in every video, one topic per video for the most part, and you can watch these videos in any order. In this video, what we're going to do is learn the date command. It's very important to learn, and thankfully it's really easy, so this should be a shorter tutorial, but the command is important all the same. And the date command primarily shows us the date, the system date, but there's other things that it could do as well. For example, you could find the last modification time of a file. You could even set the time if you wanted to. Essentially, the date command gives us the ability to perform date-related tasks. And this includes inserting date and time information into log files, querying specific days of the year, or simply printing the current date and time in case you're like me and you're too lazy to look at the clock behind you. And in this video, I'll give you some examples of the date command in action. But before we get to that, I need to take a moment and let you guys know that the merchandise shop for Learn Linux TV has just been updated with brand new products. So for all of you distro hoppers out there, I got a shirt for you. I have a distro hopper shirt, but I also have shirts for coffee drinkers, like the Aptist All Coffee shirt. That one's pretty cool. So support Linux learning and get yourself something nice. It's a win-win. And thank you so much for checking out the merch shop for Learn Linux TV. I really appreciate it. Anyway, it's time to dive into the date command, so let's get started. All right, so as always, what we'll do is start with basic usage. And with the date command, it doesn't get any more basic than this. We can simply type the word date and press enter, and that's going to give us the current date and time. Now, what's interesting is I'm recording this video on Friday, August 16th, so it's going to be interesting to find out when this video actually comes out. Every now and then, a decent amount of time can pass between recording and uploading, but as of recording time, it's currently Friday, August 16th at 4.11 in the afternoon. And I know that because I have the date command at my disposal. Now, during the intro, I mentioned that the date command could do more than just simply showing you the date and time. And here's an example of that. So what I'm going to do is use date, and we're going to use the dash R option. And this will show us the last modification time of a file. So we'll need to give it a file. And randomly, I'm going to target Etsy host. So I'll press enter and we can see the last modification time of that particular file. And feel free to do this anytime you wanna know if something's been updated recently. So if you wanted to find out if your SSH config has been updated, for example, we could type out that command right there. And that gives us some information regarding the last time that this particular file was updated. Now already the date command is pretty useful. It might not be the most useful command in the world, but it definitely has its place. We saw an example of printing the date and time and also viewing the last modification time of a file. But another use case for the date command is to utilize date and time information within scripts, programs, or just on the command line in general. In addition to that, you could also link commands together. Maybe the date is going to be a factor within a string of commands. That's also valid. But what I'll do right now is show you another example. And this one is going to involve the echo command, something that I've covered in another video. If you don't already know the echo command, you could check out that video. But what I want to do is type double quotes. I'll type a dollar sign. I'm going to put the word date inside the parentheses here, colon, and then I'll type script has finished. Now, obviously I'm not running a script, but let's pretend that I did. And let's press enter on this command right here and check it out. It shows us the date and time and then a message. I added the message manually, but if you had this as part of a program, you could set it up to where it prints the date and time that the script finishes. And if you wanted to do that, perhaps you'll add a line like this one to the end of a script. Now, another thing that you could do with the date command is format the output. Perhaps this is too much information or maybe you might want to shorten it a bit. So what I'll do right now is type date. I'm going to give you a quick example and then we'll expand on it. I'm going to type plus and then percent and then I'm going to type M just like that. Now, when I press enter, watch what happens. It prints 08, that refers to the month, it's currently August. So as you can see, if we wanted to only show the month for some reason, we could do that with this variation right here. Now, of course, that's just a simple example. And similarly, we could do the same thing with the hour. 
I could type plus percent and then capital H just like that. And that'll give me the current hour in 24 hour format. A lowercase h, for example, will give you something completely different. So already we see that the date command consists of various fields and we can access those fields by typing plus percent and then of course, whatever the character is that represents that particular field. Now the reason why this works is because of the fact that the date command accepts formatting options. If you're only interested in a certain field or if you prefer the format to be different, you could customize it. In this case, we didn't do much customizing though. We just limited the output down to one field so let's see a practical example of this in action. We'll get back to the video in just a moment, but I wanted to let you know that I have a brand new Linux course available, and if you're looking to get certified, then this one is right up your alley. Over on Udemy, I've just launched my first ever certification prep course, and this one will teach you everything you need to know in order to pass the Linux Essentials exam and become certified through the Linux Professional Institute. And with over 200,000 certification holders, LPI is the first and largest vendor neutral Linux and open source certification body. Any certification through LPI is a credential that will definitely be an asset to your career. And my brand new course is a perfect tool to help get you there. With my Linux Essentials course, you'll enjoy over 23 lessons that will teach you valuable Linux skills. Each video will keep you engaged while breaking down each and every topic into easy to understand concepts that will make even the most challenging topics seem simple. In addition, you'll be able to follow along with hands-on examples that will have you working directly with Linux commands and technologies. Even if you are not planning on becoming certified, the Linux Essentials course from Learn Linux TV is a great way to get into Linux in general. So even hobbyists will benefit from this course as well. Now don't worry though, this new Udemy course doesn't change any content that you've been enjoying here on YouTube. My new and completely separate venture on Udemy is designed to help boost your skills even further, and meanwhile, the videos here on YouTube will continue as they've been for over 10 years now. So check out my brand new Linux Essentials course and pass that exam. I would really appreciate it. Now, let's get back to the video. Going back to one of our recent examples, what I'll do is type echo. I'm just going to change it a little bit. Just like before, I'll type date, but I'm not done yet. I want to print the year and then the month. And don't worry, I'll explain this in just a moment. So I'll just type it out and then I'll tell you what I'm up to. Percent D. So I'll press enter and let's see what happens. So compared to the previous output when I had a simulated log entry like this, it was quite a bit longer, but I've shortened it a little bit. And this is just an example of how much formatting you could do with the date command. Now to explain it, here's what's going on. I'm running echo, and then I'm running the date command inside a subshell. Now what's important to know about this when it comes to a subshell is that a subshell is just executing a normal Linux command. So if I was to grab just this part right here, I'm going to copy it, and what I'll do is paste it into the terminal, I can execute that part by itself. That's going to give me the current date and time in the format that I've designated. So when you run a subshell, the command inside the parentheses is a valid command in and of itself. When you have a subshell, so you have the command inside a subshell, it's going to create a shell to run that command. So what this is going to do is create a subshell to run this date command right here. And whatever the output is, it's going to grab that output and replace this part of it right here with that output and then the rest. So this information right here was provided by this part of the command. And then the remainder that I printed right here is going to be this part of the command. But I think you get the idea. Formatting is really useful, especially when you are creating log entries because you're going to have a preferred format. Nothing wrong with that. Whatever that happens to be, you can set that up with the date command. Now let's look at this output a little bit more right here. I think some of this could be self-explanatory, like Y for year, but we have a plus sign right here. So we do need the plus sign. We just need to have the plus sign at the beginning. We're going to be working with formatting options. This is a field, this is a field, that's a field and so on. What I'll do right now is show a table on the screen that's going to show you the most common formatting options. Now, what if you want to set the date and time? It's a better idea to rely on network time sync than it is to set it manually, 
For example, NTP will set your clock automatically, and most distributions have time sync built right in. So you really shouldn't have to set the date and time with this command, but you never know. Maybe someday you'll run into a situation where you'll need to set the clock manually. And if you need to do that, I'm going to give you the command right now. So the syntax looks something like this. So I'm going to type date. I'll type dash dash set. We want to set the date and time. I'm going to set that equal to something in double quotes here. And inside the double quotes, we need to type the exact string that's needed to set the date and time. So I'll give you the format. What we'll do is type the year, then the month and the day, and then space 14, 27. And we'll also need sudo for this as well because we are making changes to the system. And as you can see, I was able to set the date and time. Anyway, like I mentioned, the date command is really simple. There's not really all that much to it. In fact, what I've given you is most of what you need to know. But since we rely on network time sync to set the date and time automatically for us, there's not really going to be very many use cases outside the basics when it comes to the date command, but you will find yourself using it within scripts quite a bit. To see an example of that, we could type something like this. Type a simple sentence. Then the date command in a subshell with no options. We don't really need any options for this example. So I'll press enter. And as you can see, the word date was replaced with the actual date and time. So whenever the interpreter hits this right here, it sees that we're trying to execute a command within a subshell. So it's going to go ahead and do that. And then this section right here gets replaced with the output of the command that's inside the parentheses. But what we're going to do right now is play a little game. Do you know the day of the week you were born on? Well, if you don't, there's an easy way to find out. What we'll do is type date, percent A, just like that, and that should give us the day. And we want to get the day from a specific date. So what we'll do is type double quotes, and we're going to type whatever our birthday happens to be. In my case, I was born in 1982, and that happened in August. And I was born specifically on the 16th. Strangely, the very same day that I'm recording this video. Anyway, what I'll do is press enter right here. And as you can see, I was born on a Monday. Now, obviously you don't have to type your birthday here. You could query any date you want, but I thought it would be a fun example of the date command. So there you go. And there's our video. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson on the date command. I know I enjoyed producing it for you guys, so if you liked it, please click that like button to let YouTube know. Anyway, I have a ton of content coming very soon, so be sure to subscribe if you haven't already done so, and I will see you in the next video.